Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Coach Stokes, Stokes House Boxing Academy. Thank you for tuning in to today's Coaches Roundtable, which topic of discussion was um, social media and how it affects people in a positive and negative manner. Today's cast was Coach Gloria Pika, New Jersey, Coach Robert Michaels of North Carolina, Coach Chris Ford Simmons, Sr. of North Carolina, Coach Daniel Grandy of Pennsylvania, Coach Sam Davis of Pennsylvania, Coach Terry Green of Texas, Doug Ward of Title Boxing, Dawood Bay of Pennsylvania, and Stevie Ray, Hall of Fame, legend of Harlem Heat. Hope you enjoy it. Let me know. Peace. Everybody, we're going to talk today about the social media create negative or positive influences within boxing. Not yeah. just within boxing, but uh, boxing, combat sports, wrestling. Daniel Grandy, what's going on? We um, we, that's what we're going to be talking about. So you know, uh, fights are normally promoted the old school way. They were promoted through promoters. Nowadays, with social media, you can cut out that middleman pretty much. But what I want to is on the table, um, starting with Coach Peak. How do you feel social media is helping? You know, um, in relationship to the uh, amateurs, I mean, obviously, social media is a way to get information out about your program and your boxers to the masses. And in, in some respects, that, that is really good. One of the problems I have with the social media is I have kids that get on social media and they want to look up and follow, um, you know, coaches or uh, schools of boxing that's not proven and from individuals who don't know the first damn thing about boxing. They're on social media trying to make some money and sell a product that they don't know anything about. And you got young kids who don't know any better. They get on there and they want to follow them. They believe it. Some of the things these the boxers in my gym have come back to the gym with, I'm like, where the hell did you get that? Oh, I was on YouTube. And, and Coach, look, they said that this will work. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so it, it, it has its drawbacks because anybody and everybody can get on there and try to sell a product that they don't know anything about. Okay, okay, Coach. Um, I want to ask. I want to ask on the different sports. Stevie Ray, how is it affecting um, world wrestling right now? As in when you came up, it's no different from uh, your last uh, uh, a speaker that was just talking. Man, I mean, social media can be used in a positive way. It can be used in a detriment way. It all depends on how it's used. Professional wrestling right now is at a, actually, people think it's an all-time high, but it's actually at an all-time low. You know, if in the last 15, 16 years, professional wrestling has gone from 10,000 viewers a week to 2,000. And if you look at the show, you think everything is really honky dory but it's really not. But if, when it comes to social media, you have the same thing. It's just when... When you came up through the ranks like we did back in the day, I got into wrestling business in 1989, 30 years ago. And you had to go through hell to make it to the big show. Nowadays, the characters are created within house, in house characters created. So you didn't have to go through like an like a actor or like a singer. Uh, other forms of entertainment where well, you have to really go through the lows of the lows and you learn how to respect the business and give back to the business. Now, so many people out there feel as though the business owes them and they've never gave anything to it. But I think that's just how America has been set now because when it comes to social media, and everybody knows I do a lot of stuff on social media, I don't call it social media. I call it anti-social media. Because at the end of the day, it has given the cowards of the world, and we all, we all know who they are, a voice.
to be negative toward anything and keep up and keep people at each other's throats and keep you dumb as hell and keep you as stupid as hell. And hey, it is what it is. That's the world we live in today. Thanks, Stevie. Uh, man, I really appreciate that. I, I, I want to swing this to my man, Daniel Grandy. Dan, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's up, coach? Uh, hey, not too much, man. We got a house full today. Um, Danny, I want to know how has social media benefited you with your twin, your twin son? I mean, like I said, social media, depending on the eyes you look through it to, through rather, it, it, it's a it's a positive negative thing. I would totally agree. But for us, you know, of course, we've benefited from it more than the negative side, like in in a in a massive way. So it's it's all dependent on your situation. And again, you get you get that a bunch of negative feedback from like like uh, the coach before just said from people off the couch that wouldn't say nothing prior to that. But then again, you you get the relationships that I've built all across the world, mm-hmm. like the one we have right now, man. You talking through social media and a host of other things. You see what I'm saying? So I mean, again, it's all through the eyes you look through it. Like if you use it properly and, and, and what it's for, it can be the best thing in the world. But use wrong. It can be a daily thing. So I, I think it's – I call it the most positive, negative thing around because it, it, it helps you market your brand, but in the same voice, you get the, 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 the outlook from people who has no idea what they're talking about and just want to talk. Like, for instance, people will take our things we do and think that, oh, man, that's just social media. But when you're seeing somebody posting constantly, constantly in the gym, that means they're constantly in the gym. But they're working. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes that gets overlooked. People do a lot of faking. You know that? Like, people do a lot of faking when it comes to certain things. But, again, used properly, I think it's a great tool. And it helps the generation out a lot. I mean, it landed my kids in the movie, so I can't look at it bad, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. So I, I, I want to swing this to everybody. You, you have somebody. Is there a proper way of putting out things on social media? So, for example... I bring my son to your gym, um, Chris Simmons. And he spars with your son. And your son get the better of my son. Is there a way of you not putting it up there, you putting it up there? Is it disrespectful if you do or if you don't? Um, is there etiquette for that? Coach Chris. Um, well, you know, that's something that uh, that I'm kind of kind of funny about. Um, you know, I always like to settle it in the beginning before we even spar to talk about, hey, you know, um, uh, are you okay with this going on social media? Um, and, you know, I know some people, you know, they, they just, I, I've been to gyms where, you know, they hid the cameras, had people recording on the slide, you know, and I personally don't like anybody videotaping the sparring that, that my son is doing. And if you always look, I never really put up full fights because, you know, that's just something that I don't do. And people are, sometimes say, hey, why don't you put up the whole fight? Well, I don't put up the whole fights. I put up clips. And, uh, you know, they said, well, the clips just, you know, show your son. Well, you know, that's who I'm promoting. You know, I'm not promoting your son. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not, not say that, that I'm going to put up clips to make the other child look bad. But, uh, you know, I think that's something that, that should be determined before you, you know, go spar that individual. And uh, the, at my gym, we have a policy that, um, you know, there's no videotaping in the gym. Uh, I think it's important for a gym to have a social media policy because um, I've been to gyms where people just, you know, they, they, they're, they're videotaping sparring with novice f- boxers and, you know, it's just horrible, you know, looking bad. Like, you know, you got 70 fights fighting a guy. You, you're beating up a guy with two fights. You know, it's just not acceptable in my book. Well, let, let, let me let me play devil, devil's advocate. What about creating false um, egos uh, when it comes to that? Because they are – and I'm learning uh, where you guys was at last year, a few years ago, that's where I'm at right now with my son. Um, you get a lot of people – um, they live off social media. You can get a kid that can have a hundred fights, right? But me and Coach Pete was talking about it yesterday. It's not all about. It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality of opposition that you face. So, for example, whenever I fought and I couldn't understand it, so I'm like, Coach, why are you putting this in? This guy got 25 fights. I only got six fights because your level 
your level is where his is at. Your level is, or is, is, is matching his. So what I'm saying is, 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 is how does that work when it comes to that? Because you get a lot of kids, you know, they, they, their head is gassed up and it's like, you know what? Um, and, and I feel like a lot of it is on a trainer. I feel like a lot of it is on, is on a trainer. Because you, get this, you get somebody with like six fights and air somebody out with like over 30, 40 fights. And then they can't understand. Then, then that kid, uh, ego is damaged. Well, you know, that, that kid already knows where he's at. You know, I, I'm going to be honest with you. All the kids know where they're at. You know, um, they may be a little hyped up, but in the, at the bottom line, you know, once they get in that ring and they sparring, you know, and they see the level of competition, you know, there may be a, a level of naivety, you know, uh, with the boxer, you know. But you, if you, sometimes you might run up on that guy like uh, – uh, uh, what's my man's name? Uh, Co out of uh, out of uh, um, where's he from? New Jersey. He had like twenty five fights and he knocked out the number one Cuban in the world. And that oh guy yeah, yeah. Two three hundred fights, man. You know, I mean, you might run up on an individual like that, but more times than not, you know, you're gonna be pretty evenly matched. I mean, um, so these guys who who are out there that that are faking, you know, they're 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 they are not matching up with the top guys in the country. Like, if you look at my son, my son's fought all the top fighters in the country. Our, our, our weight classes are always, you know, uh, three, four number ones from different weight classes right in there, you know, um, to top boxers in the country. And so, you know, some people do get a false kind of thing, but they, they, they protect those kids, though. They don't really fight against everybody. And, right. you know, like, a lot of people also, I'll say this real quick, um, they will not travel to someone's backyard like, you know, like us. We're, that's what we're known for. We'll go to we'll go to Ohio and face the best boxers in Ohio with their judges. We don't care. Uh, you know, we, we don't care win, lose, or draw. We're going to go get that experience, you know, mm -hmm. whether we win or, or they take it from us or, you know, whatever it is, we're just going to go get that experience. And I think that's what makes a boxer. You know, um, I think that's that's important to be able to do instead of always boxing at home where you have an advantage and have your judges and uh, all of that. Thank you. Coach Buck, can you uh, elaborate on that? Yes, we're going. Yes, sir. Let's agree everything the man's saying. I want to say what's up to everybody over here, all the coaches over here. I respect everybody, and it's all one unity. And I'm, I'm refreshed with the guy that said. See, when I train my guys, like you said, it's levels to this. And my guy, it ain't already green. Why well, open my fight in there with somebody that's way more green than my guy? They're getting hurt. It's levels to this. You don't put nobody in there that's got more fights than you because he's going to hurt you. It ain't no the fighter that's on the coach, like you said. It's the coach. I go to tell my guys, if you working, we working. We ain't going in there bang, banging. We ain't doing none of that. We working. It's about learning, not getting beat on. And like you said, it takes countless for people. When they do that, you go to the fighters, you hurt the guy, he don't want to come back. Now, the pride is, is hurt. He's gone. He's done. He's not going to come back now. Because you think you can over the kid because you beat him up. No, it's learning. Sparring is about learning. It's working on things. Not beating up opponents. It's about learning. You say that for fighting. So, so you got a kid. You got a kid that lives on social media, and you tell him, do not put up anything that's going on right now because you about to get ready and fight or you're in training mode. That's right. I tell him don't put it up. But 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 he but he got skills, but he's a he's a heartache outside of the ring. But he does it anyways. What do you do? I call his page down. I, I tell him to get off it. Shut it down. Shut anything down. And if you don't listen, mm -hmm. go your way. Okay. This game is about discipline. It ain't about showing off. This game is about, this game is real. And like you said, people do stuff on social media, like everybody said, it's a good and bad thing. I agree with all other coaches said too. It's good and bad. Now, people get over here, like you said, the market itself. Some people that market itself for real, they do it for real like us. Mm -hmm. We get blackballed because we do it for real. They faking to make it. <laughs> we, we in the gym every day. Yeah. All coaches on this line, we are every day. We do this for real. Ain't, ain't no faking it. We do this stuff for real because we live it. Right, right. And that make it bad or less because we care about how people who we train. It's about caring. It's about, it's about 
protecting your fighter, protecting your people that you're around, not getting them hurt. That's number one. Thanks, Coach Buck. Coach, uh, Coach Green, how, how, yeah, has, how has social media uh, worked for you in a positive and a negative aspect? Uh, uh, I never had too much negative experience with social media. So I run my son's page, but he's also on it too. And so when he looks at it, you know, he sees Coach Grandy's twins and, hey, we went to West Virginia. He saw them. Hey, next thing you know, I saw them playing in the lobby together. So he's used it to make friends. Good. I've used it to make acquaintances too. Coach Simmons. I met, uh, seen Coach Simmons in Albuquerque. Found out his wife once upon a time lived here in El Paso, Texas. And every time I see them, we speak. My son uh, plays and talks to Norman, you know, because he's younger. You know, so it's been um, – I guess a networking to make friends. It, uh, I don't take it too serious. You know what I'm saying? I, you really can't. You, you, you promoting your kid. Um, you know, you try to get sponsors here and there trying to get, you know what I'm saying? You're proud of your kid. You know what I mean? You want people to see your kid. This is your dad. You know what I mean? You're a dad, you're a coach, whatnot. You're proud of what you do. So you show it off. You know, I don't, I've never experienced somebody coming to my son's Instagram and saying something bad. First of all, I, that dog don't hunt. I ain't going to allow it. And I might show up at your house if you did. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I've, I've never experienced anything like that. But I've all I've had nothing but positives out of it. You know what I mean? My, my son's made – he's a friendly kid. He wants everybody to be his friend. He's, he's a boxer. He's a fan of boxing. You know, he's seen uh, little Chris – he was like, Dad, I got to take a picture with him. I got to go hang out with him. You know, I got to shake his hand. Same thing with Carmel. You know, they're, they're what, three, what, three years older than him, two years older than him. He kind of looks up to him. You know what I mean? It's some, um, oh, I want to be like this kid. This kid is winning everything. You know what I mean? So yeah. it get, he watched Chris win a, a tournament. And next thing you know, my son's in the gym. You know what I mean? Going a little harder. He sees something uh, Carmel did on the back. Hey, let's try this. Okay, you try it. It might not work for you. You try it. You know, so I've only had positives out of it. Now, I do see the people that, especially in the town I live in, that are on social media more than they're in the ring. You know, they're on social media more than they're in the gym. You know, you know you've been boxing 10 years and have four fights. I've seen those, I see those guys. You know, <laughs> you know, right. I see them. And then and then the same thing with the sparring videos. I, I'm not a fan of sparring videos. You're working on something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to give everybody my recipe. You know what I'm saying? That's just, you know, it's my book of secrets. But I, I see some people, you know, I live in an area where people tend to really bang it out during sparring. I live on the border of New Mexico, Mexico, and Texas, you know. And especially when we go to Mexico, when we go on that side of the border, sparring's vicious, like vicious, vicious. It's some of the, you know, you probably pay pay-per-view money to see some of these sparring sessions in Mexico. They're really, really rough, you know. I don't know. Same Philly, token, I've noticed a lot of the kids can't too, hang around man. that long. Philadelphia got some bad ones, too. Oh, yeah. I, I knew, I've never been to Philly. I, 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 I've always wanted to go. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I've, I've always wanted to go and yeah, see Philly, and check yeah. it out. I've never never been over there. But, like, Me Mexico got some really, really rough sparring sessions. And then they're known for – you go over there, you tell them how many fights your kid got. Oh, and they'll tell you, oh, no, no, this kid has no fights. No, no, no fights at all. No, 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 no fights. No, no. no. And then hmm. put them in there, and you in there with, with Muhammad Ali. You know what I mean? So it's like – yeah. You know, and they and I don't think it's that serious to try to win a sparring session. You know, I'm in here trying to work. I'm trying to, you know, develop a young fighter, you know, so I don't, the, the sparring videos, I'm not a fan of. Mitts, the videos on the mitts, I can't really do the videos on the mitts because then I wouldn't be able to hold either the mitt or the phone. You know, it don't work. You know, <laughs> I got to do one or the other. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't yeah, do them yeah. both at the same time, I'm, no, not, I'm, I'm talented. I'm not superhuman. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? I want, um, I want, I want, but, I want, I want. I, I, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. No, I just say that. Like, I, I love everything everybody does on social media. I just, some of it I can't do. I'm not good at video editing. Uh, Coach Michael can attest for you. I'm not very patient. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not a very patient person. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? So I can't sit there and edit a video or nothing like that. 
I just post it and then there it is. You know, I'm not, uh, you know, but I do respect what everybody's doing. They're promoting their kids. Uh, like I said, like we went to a tournament. Uh, my son uh, seen the Grandy twins was like, hey, that's them. My dad, and he went to go hang out with him and play for a little bit. I don't think Coach Grandy was there because this was in West Virginia, uh, the JOs this year. But next thing you know, I see my son playing with his twins in the lobby, running around and stuff. So it was kind of cool. I ain't got no complaints about it. Good, good. Um, when it comes to promoting and, and these beefs, it, it, it really is um, something that is unique to me when it comes to social media because – I see guys like Tank and Tevin Farmer, and they're going back and forth on Twitter. And I couldn't understand that. That, that really puzzled me because I'm like, how are you going to fight somebody over a computer? And they do that all the time. They sell the fight. They sell the fight big. Um, with that being said, Stevie Ray, does that happen when it comes to wrestling? Uh, no. Because... Because... Professional wrestling is all under one umbrella at the top, you know? Mm -hmm. But what you don't want, and what, you know, training guys through the years myself is going back to some of the other coaches, you have to realize self-promotion doesn't mean anything in this business. Now, you're talking about Tank Davis and some of the other guys, some of the guys at that level. Well, People put them, you know, they got PR people that put them in position to do that because we need to start promoting this fight three, four months out. Not that I agree with it, but it is what it is now, especially when you're trying to get new fans because boxing kind of went through a drought there for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And professional wrestling is going through a drought right now. So at the end of the day, uh, on the spectrum of which I come from, before you start doing stuff like that, you have to have accomplished something first. If you've never accomplished something, then you, never, you don't have respect for it. Right. So now you're just doing it for the hell of it. I'll tell you something. When I started, I, when I was a kid, I took karate. I boxed. I bodybuilded. I did everything known to man that was, it was about hurt or getting hurt. I liked it. It was just a competition. That's all I cared about, the competition, nothing else. If I got in the boxing ring, I just wanted to fight. If I got, we did point karate, I just wanted to do it. Bodybuilding, you just hurt yourself in the gym all the way up to a contest. Pro wrestling, I just wanted to be as good at it. I never thought I was going to go to the top of the business. I never thought about it. It was just the, in my family, I got four brothers. You fight. You learn, you respect. Everything is about honor and having something. And that's just the way it was when I grew up, man. And uh, that was before the social media era. So the same thing I try to teach some of these guys, brother, you can't be a star by just thinking about it. You got to be about it. You can get on social media and promote yourself all day long. And that's some of the things that we didn't do, let guys get on and promote yourself. If you're wrestling, you got to learn everything before you get to the top. Because it's performing. Got to be a great athlete. That's one thing. But if you don't know how to perform and put butts in seats, what do you have? You're just another guy. So you got to have a little bit more respect for the business and use social media in a positive way, showing people what you do without trying to do, you know, low rate somebody, degrade somebody, and talk about another wrestling promotion and this, that, and the other. Because at the end of the day, the business is the business, and you got to respect it. And I look, at, I look at all sports like that, bro. Sports is going to be here when we're all gone. Did you get back to it or did you just take from it? Or did you want it to do something for you? Which one? Because you will, you know, e eventually you will be found out what you're really trying to do for the sport. Mm. Stevie, Stevie do, do you have guys like Coach Pete mentioned earlier? It's common in boxing. You get somebody that – Feel like they want to box. And they've been out. They've been with their online boxing teacher for about six months, so they feel like they can get they brave and they can get to a real ring with somebody. Do you get that in 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 wrestling? I know wrestling. Yeah, camps. You have you know everything, but just ask my question. Do you have you have poses that come in like that? Oh man, you know the the game got so crazy now that it's just the blind leading the blind. 
guys that's never done nothing in this business are so-called trying to teach guys about the business. In any business, whether it be boxing, and I know all these coaches can attest to this, if you have them put in the rich time, how can you tell somebody else about it? Mm. You've got to put the rich time in. So it's just a blind leading the blind and guys just being chicken hawks. And what we call chicken hawks is just guys trying to make money off other guys that don't know. And that's why we call it the blind leading the blind. So, give, you know, once you get to a certain level, this is always one thing in, in the wrestling business. And I think it's like this in the boxing business also. Once you get to a certain level, you start giving back and trying to bring people up. That's the respect factor that I'm talking about. Nowadays, nobody cares about that. It's like, hey, I'm going to try to get mine regardless. So then, therefore, you start to kill the business. And you have no traditional, uh, you, 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 you just didn't give back to the traditional ways of which this business was built. So it's getting hijacked by a lot of chicken hawks in a lot of ways. Stevie, hey, so, so, so how, what do you, not what do you think, but how do we stop that or, 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 or how do we cut that off? It, it, you know, I mean, in showing, you know, our youth or these young kids that's going to be coming up, you know, I mean, you know, I, I remember, I remember if I'm walking home and I did something, mm -hmm. before I got to my grandmother, Miss such and such would call her and be like, are you Martha Ferguson, grandson? I know you would do that. I'm about to tell your grandmama. And before I got home, my grandmother knew. It took a village to raise a child. That's what I'm saying. People don't yeah. do that nowadays. No, they don't. I mean, you know, I have all my, I, I got certain theories. But, but at the end of the day, I really don't know, man, because, you know, even raising a daughter, these guys, other coaches, they have sons that they got to follow into something that they love. Well, I only have one child, and she's a, a female, my daughter. And just, my daughter just turned 24. Just uh, going through those years, her real crucial years of coming up in a city of which I live, Houston, Texas. I mean, my daughter turned out very well. She's very, very well spoken, very intelligent. Graduated uh, uh, high marks in her, in college and high school started a reinvented a black you know sarah at her white college so she's always been very in tune with what she comes from and what parents come from what grandparents come from what me and her uncle did you know in the level of which we did it in she always had respect for that and you know it's one thing that she does not indulge in in these, these days she will not get on social media she will not do Facebook. She will not do Twitter. And if she does it, it's very, very, very limited. And I asked her one day, why don't you uh, indulge in social media? Because she said, that is just another way to brainwash people. Mm. And I don't want to be a part of that. So I'm not trying to blame social media for something, but it's that focus. I think as a people... You know, we've been brainwashed in so many different ways trying to keep up with the Joneses, and we know who the Joneses are, and we let them feed us so much bull crap, and we know what, who, those, who these people are. And as parents and as statesmen, elder statesmen, which is older than the young, older than the generation before you, I work with Houston Community College, and I do everything that I can to help talk. I go to high schools, talk to kids. I go to junior highs. I even go to the colleges and, you know, trying to help some of the kids in the inner city get into programs so they can learn trades. So I think a lot of things, it is, we all know, a lot of people don't want to admit it, but the government knows. It's profit and poverty. It's profit and illiteracy. It's profit and dysfunctionality. And we either you're a part of the problem or you're a part of the solution. And that's the way I look at it. Mm. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Um, Coach Grandy. Um, oh, bro. 
We were talking about. See, I'm not excuse the noise. I'm actually in the gym. We already spar. I literally just got off the plane and came to the gym. You know, we get, in, we get in where we can. So, you know, I appreciate the time. For sure, for sure, bro. I, 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 I want to know when it comes to social media, man, you know, like that. But, you know, like, do you, do, do you, do you um, take care of your son's account or do they do it? If you allow them to do it or do you guys share? How, do, how does that happen? Nah, my sons don't ever even go on social media, honestly, bro. They, they never, they try to on social media a collective 10 times. I keep them away from it. They're 10 year old children, and we deal with so much at this level, like reaching the world. It's kind of, in a, in a sense, for us, it's a little different when it comes to social media and the aspect of like, we've had videos that reach 44 million people. So, our account, of course, we deal with every aspect of it. We've seen everything that you can see on social media. I'll put it like that. The negative, the positive, the love, the hate, everything. So I, I tend to keep them away from it. I deal with it in my own, you know, fashion. And with that being said, elaborating on what y'all was talking about earlier, I don't even share sparring videos. I got so many videos of my kids, whether they're getting over or whatever the case may be, but I don't share because, like Mr. Simmons said, it's not about that. It's not about trying to make a kid look bad. I do this to promote my children. That's it. I'm not in it to, to try to put nobody down, to try to look like we better than nobody. You know me personally. You know I ain't in none of that, man. I try to help everybody I come in contact with. So I use my platform a little different, or that their platform, should I say. I use it a little different than most. When most people, if they were in the light or space we in, I would say, they probably would abuse it to the sense of trying to downplay people. But I, I, I try my hardest not to because that's not what this is about. Like the, this, this guy's plan is, is just a little different, man. And I look at it through different eyes. So I, I feel like if you use it properly, it's a good thing, man. It's a good thing. And I, like I said, I try to keep my kids away from it because they tend, they don't need to see comments of some racist person every once in a while saying something ignorant. They don't need to see that. Right, right, um, right. right, right. I, I run it completely. Like, I mean, uh, like Big Dog Stevie Ray said, you got chicken hogs out there. And you told me, you and Big Chris told me, Coach Pete told me, uh, Buck, uh, Coach Mike, y'all told me, man, when my son started getting into it, man, you're going to have ignorance around. And, and and I just can't believe it. some of the things that, that people that come out of their mouth and they hide behind that computer. You know what I'm saying? That's the that's the worst thing where you can't you can't do nothing. You know, um, you got to have you got to have six, six skin. You, know? yep. you got to you got to you got to brush it off. Um, it, 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 it's rough, man, because. When it comes to social media, I came up during a time where you would you would never ever uh, think of somebody being on the telephone and you can talk to them. But nowadays, everybody, right, it's different. Everybody like my wife was educating me about this because she's in the health really big. She's saying you see a lot of people with the hunch back on they on their back now because why they like this constantly on their phone. So your body's gonna start to the, the all day long, like that, all the time. You know what I'm saying? You see, we went out to eat the other day, and you see families, a husband and wife, and all these kids. West, everybody's on their phone like this. So, so, so our computers are, are they making the world better? Or are they making it dumber? All right, hold on. Here, I, I got to get Coach Peak. Hold on, hold on, man. I don't want her to curse me out. <laughs> Go ahead, Coach. Go ahead, Coach. Oh, I got to respond to that, Steve. Yeah, and I say they definitely make it a dumber because look, you've got kids that can tell you everything about the computer, but they can't read C Jane Run. Wow. Or yeah. they can't even. I have kids that are come in the gym. They'll say to me, "There's a clock up over me." They'll say, "I'll say sign in and put the time down." And they're standing there looking dumbfounded. And I'm like, boy, I told you to put the time down. He said, well, what, what time is it? I said, look up at the clock. What do you mean, what time? He said, well, oh, I, I can't read that. I said, what? I mean, I was, it just blew me away. It, it blew me away. They could not read the clock because the clock, it's like 15 after. Right. I said, well, it's 15 after. And they'll say, well, how do I write that down? Okay. 
but they will spend all day on games. They will spend all day on social media, okay? But when it comes time for them to have to talk and communicate to you, mm-hmm. they can't necessarily communicate well. Right. You know, they, they're just, it's easier for them to deal on social media um, because they can hide behind a whole lot of things. They can say a whole lot of things that is not necessarily true and things that they couldn't say to a real individual in front of them. You know, and the phone you're talking about, I have coaches, okay? I'll say, listen, I'm going to, you know, call me with um, the information you were going to give me. Oh, well, uh, uh, can't you just text me? Well, yeah, I can text you, but it would be easier for us to talk on the phone. Well, I I don't do a lot of talking. I can just, I just text. I mean, it's just, it's amazing to me because I think the computer has uh, helped individuals' brains to shrink, okay, so that their intelligence has definitely taken a nosedive. So social media is used for good things. And is good, you know, of course, you know, it, it, it could be overdrawn where it can be negative. Um, I haven't had many bad experiences with it, but when I have, I try to do what I always do, and that's learn from it. And I think the best thing that we all can do is, you know, if you ever get caught up or you ever get in that position, you know, uh, you got you to gotta, you gotta turn it or, or go the other way and turn it into a positive message. You know, I know I talk to Chris Simmons. I talk to him uh, uh, quite often, you know, and that's helped me out a lot, brother, with a lot of things you told me to prepare me. And definitely Coach Peak and Coach Michaels, who's raised me and Bug and Green and, you know, um, you know, big Stevie Ray. What I want to know is I want to change the ties and let's talk about uh, when it comes to boxing. Stevie Ray is definitely a, a, a man when it comes to boxing. I thought he was, I thought the brother just knew about wrestling. He knows about boxing, shoe sizes, all that. So what I want to know is this, um, starting with a young lady, Coach Pete, who do you got for the Anthony Joshua and big baby Miller fight? <laughs> Oh boy. Um, I think I think Joshua. I think I think Joshua. I I don't I don't know if, if Big Baby Miller, you know, if he's ready, if he's had if he's had enough time. Mm-hmm. You know, I it's you know, it it'll be interesting to see. I mean, you know, I could be dead wrong and, and you know, he could come out and be a beast, but at this particular time, what I've seen of him and everything, I, you know, I might give the edge to Joshua, and I'm not a big fan of Joshua. Okay, okay. So one for Anthony Joshua, Coach uh, Coach Chris Sims. Who you rolling with? Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, say the same thing as uh, uh, Coach Pete because uh, Anthony Joshua is just too big, man, too strong. Uh, unless Miller gets a flash knockout, I don't see him really having a chance. So no chance. Two for Joshua. All right. Coach Green, who you got? Oh, I got Anthony Joshua. Uh, Miller's for a 300-pound dude, it don't seem like he packed up enough mustard on the sandwich when you punch. I just, it just don't seem like he got that. Uh, Joshua – uh, he's a bigger puncher. I don't think he's the greatest boxer, but he's a better boxer, and he's tall. So, I, yeah, I give Anthony Joshua that one, and I don't think it's going to be a very hard fight either. Really? So you don't, you don't, see, it, you don't see it going past how many rounds? About eight. Okay, okay. All right. I can live with that. Coach Bucky, who you got? I got Joshua, man. I got Joshua in six. Joshua in six. Okay. I'll do him up, man. Okay. Coach Mike. Am I muted? There we go. You yeah. know, you know, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go just the opposite of everybody else. I'm going for the supposed underdog in this fight. And the reason why I say that is because I'm looking at a Bo Holyfield scenario. Okay. The, small, the smaller guy. The guy that a lot of people don't know about. They know of him, but they don't know a lot about. 
So we go with what we know from Joshua because we've seen what he does. Okay. The social media, if you will, the, the fights that he's recently had, I got all of that. But at the same time, we don't know what Miller's going to have that night. We really don't know. So I'm going to go out the box. I'm going to go for the underdog. I think it's going to be a shock that night. I'm loving that. All right, hold on. Stevie. Yes. I already know who we already know, but can you explain everybody what we're talking about in that text message? Stevie Ray broke it down for me. <laughs> break down the science behind the business. Please break it down. You, you know, I was you know, I don't know if we could bet. Can we bet on your show? Can we can we make wagers? Because I would I would love to make a wager with a good coach who, who just picked uh big baby. Hey, 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 he will hey, this is my man and he would love to go ahead and do that. You know, I'm gonna unmute him. Go ahead, Coach Mike. Yeah, I'm, li I'm, I'm listening to you, brother. Talk to him. I, I would love to make a bet with you, my good man. You know, my good friend, I just met you, but I know you're a good man. And I would love to make a wager that big baby is going to be let me tell you something this is exactly what we what we were talking about what uh we were just talking about the other day this guy is going to be a sacrificial lamb for anthony joshua that is what they're doing and it's unfortunate that big baby got to be the guy that comes out to do this because hey he got a future he's a young guy he'll get over it but at the end of the day i'm telling you right now this guy has to fall if he doesn't fall brother it is maybe a billion dollars at stake, and I ain't finna let Big Baby come in and get none of it. And that's the deal. He knows what's up. You're going against the top guy, and a top guy is not going to pick a guy that's actually competitive. You know that as well as I do. On the, I, I agree with you on the business aspects of it. That's it's all about putting putting the behinds in the seats and the oh and yeah, building. and yeah, a little more than that. Right, I'm with you on that, but. I'm still rolling with what I'm saying. I just got a feeling about this. Oh, uh, okay. I'm not trying to change your mind. I just want to get in on it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I make sure y'all y'all exchange numbers. Y'all can exchange numbers and y'all can talk. About it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Bro. I got a feeling about this. One. I just got a hey, big baby, three hundred pounds. It's a big man, bro. And the heart can only. Push so much air through the body. He light on his feet, and I noticed that the last fight that Joshua had with was that Joseph Parker, I think it was. That yes, was yes, yes, yes. He took he took some shots. He had no man's getting hit with from a guy that was a boxer. Big baby, mm -hmm. on the other hand, a big man, which he is. Like I said, you know, he may not pack the most powerful punch. I understand that. Right. But at the same time, he's in condition to be very big, and he can box. I agree with you on the potential of Big Baby. Potential. Joseph Parker is a top hand right now. So I really can't compare the two fighters. But I tell you this, when the guy that holds three belts come all the way across the water to make his big splash in New York City, somebody got to go. And it will be Big Baby. Or I, I agree with somebody got to go because this this is a huge business move. Huge. Yeah, a very huge business move. So we will agree on that part of it 100%. But I got one other question. <laughs> I got one other question. With all the, you know, if we're gonna if we're gonna pick fight and predict fights of all the fights to predict, why are we talking about this one? Okay, what, what, all right. What, what, what you want to talk about then, Big Dog? I mean, I mean I'm, I'm sorry. This fight here is already preordained as far as I'm concerned. Okay. I mean, but don't you think the uh, fight that they're going to do right here in Texas is a little bit more intriguing? Oh, what happened? I lost it. He talking about, he talking about, he talking about, he talking about uh, Spencing uh, Garcia. And Garcia. I think that's the fight we should be talking about. Oh, so, 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 so let me ask you, I'm going to mute you, Stevie. I'm, 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 I'm Okay, mute. go ahead. Go ahead. And I want to hear everybody else. Buck. Yes. We got Garcia Spence. I like Mikey, man, but Spence, man. Spence, man. I got Spence. All the way, Aaron Spence. Knockout or decision? I got to go on decision. I mean, it's going to be a tough fight. After the seven round, 
I don't know. It's going to kind of shake you, but I got Spence, though. Spence? Yes. All right. Hey, Coach Terry Green, what's going to happen? Yo. What's going to happen in that fight? I got I got EJ walking him down. Man. I got EJ walking him down. It's a big dude for 47, man. That's Very a big big. welterweight. Very big. And he can make a ring really, really small. <laughs> yeah, he can make a ring really, really small. And he goes to the body. You know what I mean? So them legs probably ain't going to hold up too long. You can't run around them too much. You know, he, he can deliver a big punch. He he got constant work rate, constantly moving his hands, got good defense. I like Mikey, but Errol Spence is just going to walk him down. It just He's going to walk him down. So a uh, knockout or decision? I, I, I'd wager on a knockout in 10. Okay. That's, 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 that's legitimate. Okay. Coach, uh, Coach Chris, talk to me, brother. Man, y'all, uh, Y'all probably ain't gonna agree with me on this one, man. But uh, I, I, I'm kind of, kind of conflicted. But uh, I believe, like, uh, like Stevie Ray, man, it's, it's always a, uh, there's always a script behind all of this stuff, like a big soap opera. And uh, I just see Mikey taking a lot of risk, man. I mean, he's taking a lot of risk, and uh, this guy can really fight. I know Earl is big, and uh, I really like Earl Spence for the fight, but. Uh, um, I just think I, I just think some kind of way Mikey is gonna pull this fight out. It's gonna shock really? the world. I, I, I do I think okay. Mikey pull it out. I, I know y'all probably don't No, know no, it. I love it. I love it. I love I, confusion. I, I, I love I, it. <laughs> I, I I just don't see this guy risking his undefeated record when he can make a fight with anybody he wants. I mean, people say, you know, that Earl Spence is a draw. He's not the draw. Mikey's the draw. Everybody in Texas is gonna come see Mikey, man. They love Mikey, man. There's gonna be there's gonna be more Hispanics, you know, Mexican, Mexican Americans uh, in in that uh, stadium, man, than anything. And they're gonna be all for Mikey. And I'm just gonna say, don't be shocked, you know. Now, okay. I personally, I personally would like to see Earl Spence win, but I just think Mikey's gonna get it some kind of way. I don't know, hook or crook. I think he's gonna get it. Mm. Hook or crook. We got it. Coach Peak. You know what? I like what Coach – that was Coach Sims, right, you were just talking to? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, Coach Sims is kind of, you know, he, he, he's speaking what I have been thinking because I love Earl Spence. I worked with him in the Olympics and all of that stuff, and, I, you know, he's, he's got size, he's got power, he works. But, you know – I mean, I agree for Garcia to 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 uh to come out of playing it safe uh -huh. and and challenge Earl and, and 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 challenge Earl and make this move. And um, you know, the fact that it's uh where it's gonna be and the fact that it's gonna be, you know, so many, you know, Mexicans and I just think that you know, if it's close or anything at all, uh, they may give it to uh, Garcia. May get it. Really? I think it's going. It's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be a tough fight. And technically, I would say that Earl should should take it. It won't be easy because Gar mm -hmm. Garcia can fight. Yeah. Uh, it won't be easy, but I think he's going to really have to be ab above above his game. Okay. In order to really uh, get him out of there, and he'd have to get him out clean. I got you. He'd have to almost be a knockout. All right, uh, Coach uh, Sims, you were gonna add on? Yeah, I was gonna say. You know, I'd even go as far to say if it was eight to four, uh, um, eight to four, um, uh, Earl, uh, he gonna lose that fight. He, he's got to be even cleaner than that. It's got to be a straight sweep. He got to dog that boy for all twelve rounds or stop him. If he don't do that, if that fight is anywhere close, if from anywhere close to eight to four, he's done. He's going to lose that fight. That, that This guy did not challenge. He, he, nobody gave him a chance against Ebony. Nobody thought he was going to win that fight. Nobody thought he was going to beat Brown. I mean, we know Brown is a good fighter, but I, nobody thought he was going to do Brown like that. I mean, that guy can fight, man. Yeah. It's going to be a good fight. I mean, it can't be close.
It can't be close. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Stevie Ray, break it down. Yes. What's going to happen? I frankly don't know what happened, but I agree exactly with what the good coach was just talking about, brother. And you know something else? What's that? I, I'm going to be at that fight. Uh oh. Yes, my good friend Ronnie Shields has already hooked me up. Ronnie but with all that, what, huh? I said Ronnie Shields, the legend. Yeah, that's my boy, man. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, me and some buddies of mine are going down to that fight. But be that, be that, with all that being said, exactly what I've been thinking, the same thing. Of all the people for this guy to fight, he fight the biggest, baddest welterweight that could be a junior middleweight if he wanted to, that's run, running rampant through Texas and the whole United States of America. You pick this guy to fight. And you also know Jerry Jones has some kind of stake in Earl Spence. I don't know exactly what it is. Yes, Jerry Jones got something to do. And like he said, like the coach said, the draw in Texas, it ain't Earl Spence. The draw in Texas is anybody of Hispanic descent. Mm. I was at the Pacquiao, Pacquiao Margarito fight in the same stadium. Remember that fight? Yes, I do. Margarito and uh, Manny Pacquiao? Yep. I seen Manny Pacquiao beat this man unmercifully. I've never seen a guy take a beating like this, and they didn't stop the fight. And after the fight, in the parking lot, I've seen about 10 fights with Hispanic people so pissed off that they were jumping on other people. This is real talk. You know, this is real talk. I was there. I saw it. So with that being said, if Mikey stays close, don't be surprised if he steals the fight. Do not be surprised. You guys over Because if, J if Jerry Jones made that kind of money one time, he wants to make it again. <laughs> yeah, you're right, 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 right. Exactly. It's all about money. That's just, that's just me. I'm, that's just, I'm not a, con a conspiracy theorist. Hey, it is what it is. What, what they say, men lie, women lie, numbers don't? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One thing you cannot dispute when it comes to lying is the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on a second. So, uh, Coach Buck, you was going to add on? Yes. Uh, I agree to the, what the man said just now. What, what he said, uh, what the coach said, it's, it's like this. I still like, I still, I'm still taking Aaron Smith all day long. But if we come down to like, Mikey, keep it close, he going to give it to Mikey. Like he said, could Jerry Jones play a big part in anything? Right. Look what look what team went. Dallas Cowboys. And what they known for. Cheating. There you go. Cheating. There you go. I'm a Giants fan, so you know I don't like him. But I'm correct with what the coach said. But the other guy said, he's right. It's all about the money at the end of the day. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Hey, I, I, I want to bring uh, maybe probably the second biggest fight, and that's going to be um, Canelo versus Jacobs. I think it's going to be a good fight. And I'm going, me personally, I'm rolling with Danny Jacobs to beat Canelo. Honestly. So Coach Pete, what do you who you got? Ooh. Hmm. I, I like Danny Jacobs. I like Danny Jacobs. I always have. Um, but woo, that's gonna be that's gonna be an interesting fight. Uh with Cornello. But I, I I think I think J Danny Jacobs can beat him. Is that fight in Brooklyn or is it uh in Vegas? Do we know? I don't. I don't know if they've said where that fight is yet. Is it in Vegas, Coach? I don't know. Coach Mike, you said Vegas. I think it's in Vegas. Okay. Yeah. Well, if it's gonna be in Vegas, then uh, you know they pro Canelo. Yeah. Coach, Coach Mike, who do you got now? I, I like Danny. I like Danny in this fight. You know, I'd, I'd have to admit, though, that Canelo graduated to another level the night he fought Floyd. Oh, yeah. He, he graduated. And this boy has been on a different level since then. He has some rough moments in certain fights, but he's been on a different level. 
But now with Danny's, you know, ability to adjust, he can box, he can punch, he's a thinker. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a, a tactical thing that I think it must be more of a, of a brawl like more people might think it's going to be. It's going to be who's going to out chest the guy. That's what I think. And who's going to have the more conditioning factor in this fight, I think, is going to win. And I think it's going to be Danny. I got to go with Danny. Two with Danny Jacobs. Uh, Coach Chris? Uh, well, you know, I'm probably going to say something crazy again. But I, I'll, I'll say this. Um, and I, I felt this way about the uh, Triple G fight, too. I thought if I thought if Danny Jacobs came out and press Triple G. I mm -hmm. thought he would have he would have knocked him out early. Uh, he, he listen. He 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 he, he would have knocked him out early. Now I'm gonna say the same thing for Canelo. It, it, and people, oh, he's strong and this and that. Not nah, it, it. Daniel Jacobs is one of the strongest fighters out there. If he comes out and he just jumps on Canelo, he can get him out of there in the first or second round. If he go past the third round, if he try to box Canelo, number one. He ain't gonna win no decision. I don't care where they fight. They could fight on the moon in a in the in the space shuttle. Uh, they could fight in Andrew, North Carolina. He's the Canelo's the bigger draw. He's 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 the king, the cash king right now. Uh, besides Floyd, nobody nobody's making money like Canelo. Uh, and and guess what? They're not gonna put him in a fight that they haven't already set it up for him to win. Right. The only way Daniel Jacobs win is by knockout. I don't care if he beats him up, he still ain't gonna win. Uh, it's, it, I, I mean, that's just like with, uh, with. Let me tell you something. If you win, uh, you, if you get a judge to vote for you against Floyd Mayweather, come on, man. When you got destroyed, and, and a judge gave you, you want you, you lost a two-one split against Floyd Mayweather. Come right. on, man. So, so he, he's the biggest draw in boxing, and. Uh, I don't see him losing unless Daniel Jacob knocks him out in the first or second round. Other than that, he's is done. It's not. It's a wrap. Okay. Big Green. Yo. What's your set? Oh, uh, your pick on that. Uh, I'm with Coach Simmons on that one. The decision goes Canelo's way, but DJ can fight. DJ can box. I DJ gonna beat him up but he's not going to win. Okay. You know, he's going to do everything he can do, but he's not going to win. He ain't going to get no judges to swing his way. It's just not going to happen. I just don't see it happening. I see what Canelo did. He went up to 68, see if he could deal with somebody that that rehydrates to, like, DJ's size. He didn't turn out getting the work he, he, he was looking for when he went up there and uh, fought old buddy for that little 168-pound title. Right. And that guy and, and DJ beat him up. I'll box him. He gonna give him looks he probably hasn't seen. You know, DJ. Uh, I know this has been switching a lot. You know what I mean? He gonna give it to him from the southpaw stance. He gonna give it to him from the orthodox stance. And at the end of the day, they can say and still Canelo Alvarez. So that's how I see it. Good pick. Good pick. Coach Bucky. I got Dave Jacobs, man, like everybody else said. But he got he got like he got like another route to get this get this win. And if you don't, you don't know what's gonna happen. I get the, everybody else agreed. Get the cash cow. Besides before he left, he's the biggest name right now, so it's gonna swing his way. That's all that's all that I that's how I go. Okay, I, that's my I, I, I once I get this from uh uh um Stevie Ray, I, I do want to ask a question. It just came to my, my mind when you said cash cow. I just want to ask everybody who who you think Oscar's next cash cow going to be after Canelo retires. No, no, don't, no, don't say that. Don't say that. Yeah, I got to ask Stevie Ray. Hold on. And then we'll, then we'll be done. Steve, uh, uh, what, what is your uh, come out on this fight? Who are you talking to now? Stevie, you, what do you, what do you think is going to happen? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, man, come on, man. I mean, I do agree with the good coach that uh, pointed out the fact that after Canelo Alvarez fought Mayweather, he graduated to a new class. Because if you've seen Canelo fight before that, and I actually really think that is why Mayweather and them took the fight against Canelo. 
is because when he fought Austin Trout, this guy couldn't deal with a jab, especially a jab from somebody with length. People have to realize the anatomy of the African-American fighter. We have long legs, torsos or so what, but our arm reach is mo more reached than any other anatomy on earth. Canelo had never really fought the African-American with reach. And that's why Floyd dominated him. And if you look at the Austin Trout fight, if you take away the knockdown, he lost that fight. <clears throat> so with all that being said, with all that being said, Triple G, actually, I'm at a Hispanic yep. sports bar. One of the few Af African-Americans that was in this. Excuse me? No, he's grinning with you. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I was at a I was at an African American where just did a professional wrestling show this that night when he fought when he fought Triple G the first time. Everybody in this African I mean in this Hispanic sports bar that loves this guy said that he lost that fight. Everybody, and then when he came out, it was a draw. Then in the next fight, I met a pretty much mixed sports bar, and most people thought Triple G won the fight. Or they thought that one couldn't be no less than a draw. So if you look at both of those fights, the fight that everybody thought he lost, he got a draw. Everybody thought it should have been maybe a draw in the second fight, he won the fight. So when you just signed a $360 million contract with the zone, brother, you know what you got to do to beat this man? Put it like this. <laughs> Nino Brown on New Jack City, a million dollar a week business and don't nobody know nothing. That's how it goes down. <laughs> uh, that's how it goes down. Yeah. <laughs> that's about it, bro. So Danny Jacobs better come in like Popeye after he just eaten some spinach with two big bricks in each hand and get him out of there. Other than that, 360 million, bro, million brother. I can't let you have none of this, dog. Yeah. You got to take it. You got to take it. You can't earn it. You got to take it. It's a big difference. Right, right. Thanks. Thanks, brother. Hey, everybody, I want to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and conclude. Uh, before we get off, I just want to go around and just ask everybody for their social media handles because uh, I'm going to be putting them up on the, on the uh, when I write everything down so everybody can go ahead and follow you um, and you can get more traffic to your page. So I want to go ahead and start with Coach P. Coach P. Your social media uh, outlets where people can uh, contact you, reach you at. Can you please give them, please? Uh, Facebook, uh, Coach uh, Gloria Peak. Also, uh, the same for uh, Instagram and the same for YouTube. Got you. Thanks, Coach. Coach Chris, thank you for your patience, brother, uh, for fitting me in there. Can you please let everybody know how, how, how they can follow you and your sons? Uh, on Facebook, uh, it's uh, Chris Simmons. Um, on Instagram, it's uh, at Big Red NC for Christopher. It's uh, at Big Norman the One, at Big Norman the One for Norman, and uh, at Coach Simmons NC uh, for me, um, and at uh, the Simmons Team NC for um, for uh, the team. Thank you, Coach. Coach Green, can you please uh, give us your social media handles? All right. Uh, for Facebook, it's just Terry Green. And then my son is Terry Green, the third TG3. Uh, Instagram, he's at TG3 underscore boxing on Instagram and Twitter. And then I'm at T Green Box Academy on Instagram. I don't have no Twitter. Got you. Thanks, Coach. Coach Bucky, can you please let us uh, know your social media uh, outlets and handles, please? Yes. <clears throat> My Facebook name is Samuel Davis, S-A-M-U-E-L Davis. And my Instagram name is Hot With The Hands, straight across. Hot With The Hands. Okay. Hot With The Hands. And uh, Coach Mike, can you please give us your social media? Uh, Facebook. Facebook, they set me up at Robert Michael. That's me. And then... Boxing Coach 176 on my Instagram. Boxing Coach 176. Yep. Uh, Stevie Ray, 
uh, for those, if you have a uh, social media, can you let us know? And then also let us know about your uh, your, your podcast and when you're going to be coming back on because you got a really good podcast that I've been checking out. Lay it down, man, because I'm going to have to have each and every person that was on your show today on my podcast so we can really lay it down and chop it up because that's what we do. My moniker is champion knows champions and game knows game. Mm. So I got to get each I got to get each and every last one of these guys uh, to uh, come on the show one time or another so we can talk some boxing. But you can reach me at Stephen Ray on my uh, Facebook page, Stephen Ray Athlete. On my uh, Instagram, Steve Ray uh, nine one underscore nine one one, and uh, on my uh, Twitter is the real Stevie Ray. And I'm uh, starting my uh, I'll also be starting my uh, YouTube channel back. So we're going to be uh, on my on my uh, podcast stat, uh, straight shooting with Stevie Ray. So we're going to be probably going back up in the next week or two. And uh, I'm also going to have a call-in line so I can have the fans call in, ask questions, or send comments and ask these good people that know a lot about boxing and try to educate the world on real boxing. Uh, like my man Chris Simmons, it seems like me and him agree on a lot of things. And we're going to lay it down to the whole world as to things, how things really, really go. And I can't wait, man. So uh, I really enjoyed this today. And uh, hey, I'm going to be hooking up with all you guys, man. Hey, um, uh, um, uh, this this brother just he came on at the tail end, but he's gonna be on the next the next round table. And anybody know if you want to get on next one, you can hit me up, let me know, or I or, or I'll send you all the information. But Dawu Bay, uh, he's out of Philadelphia. Um, Dawu, we just we just finished, man. But we had a great conversation. I just want to ask you a couple questions. Who is gonna win the fight between um, 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 Spence and Garcia? He's he muted. Go ahead. I'm still muted. Uh, can no, you hear me? Yeah, right? you on you muted. You good? Okay. Um, I pick Errol Spence. Um, I think that Mikey has a little bit more of a chance than like people was giving him. Like in the beginning, um, I went back and watched some fights of him boxing South Paul's. Hey, uh, hey. Mikey has the ability to use lateral movement, and and me personally, I'm not trying to, but I think. If I was going to fight somebody out of Derrick James' camp, I think I would want to fight him uh, laterally. I think that um, the similarities that I see in uh, Charlo and Earl, and it's a training thing. It's like it's a mentality, and I think that it can be offset with certain things, and I think that Mikey feels that he understands him. I think that uh, he got to make it through, though, and I don't know if he can do that because I don't know if nobody can do that at 47, um, and I pick Earl Spence because of that, probably by a late stoppage. Stoppage, yeah, a late one. Okay, okay. What about um, uh, Big Baby and Joshua? I want Big Baby to win, but <laughs> I just I want him <laughs> to win, but I can't. I can't really come up with a. Anthony Joshua get tired in the middle of a fight sometimes, and like Big Baby's like got like this workhorse thing with him, and like he could make it rough. And stuff like that. And Joshua seemed like sometimes he seemed like just shaken up by the mentality. So maybe like Big Baby could hop on him and pull something off. But other than that, I got the rock with Joshua. I really think Joshua gonna win. I just I just wanted to root for Big Baby, I guess. Okay, because I was gonna say my man in the uh, upper right hand corner, uh big Stevie Ray was taking bets on that. <laughs> yeah, he's taking bets. He covered all bets. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna know, know. Uh, Coach Michael, Coach Michael, <laughs> baby. Man, no, see if I had the bet, I can't do it. Hi, huh, Coach. I want to touch base on something real quick, but I know you got to go, babe. I just want to touch base on that on the the Earl Spence Garcia fight. I know that there was a particular reason why the Garcia camp chose Spence. And I truly believe that he did that because he said he, he saw something. I got that, but I don't. But what's strange to me is that he was talking a lot of trash on Crawford, but he chose not to fight Crawford.
So in my opinion, I'm thinking that Crawford would have been a much harder fight for Garcia because he's a mover and a boxer. Spence, on the other hand, is going to be right in your face. So maybe that's what they looked at. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. So what are you saying? What are you saying? So you just brought up something which is very relevant, and I hope it happens. But if they was to make Bud and uh, Spence happen, man, who you rolling with? And my, I, I still got to go. I still got to go. My own opinion, my own personal opinion, the most complete of the two fighters, in my opinion, is Bud. Okay, okay. I got to get everybody else. I got to get everybody else. Everybody else. Coach P. Yeah. Who you got? Um, between Spence and Crawford. I'm going with Crawford. Okay. That's I'm two for Crawford. That's two for Crawford. Uh, Buck, who you got? I'm going with Aaron Spence, man. I'm going with Spence. Okay. Okay. Hey, Coach Green, who you rocking with? Hey, that was a toss-up to me. I think Bud is the most a more complete fighter, personally, but I just think Spence is a, a big, big dude. <laughs> just a, you know what I mean? He's just a big, big guy. You know, I feel like he gets in the ring and he's almost a light heavyweight. You know what I mean? It's to me, Bud is complete. You know, he's he can he can switch it up on you. He, he's got power in both hands. You know, it seems that when he switches the southpaw, he's already got you figured out. Mm -hmm. But I just when they get in the ring after they rehydrate, Errol Spence just look like a linebacker to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like no matter what you're throwing at him, he can pretty much eat it you know what i mean i think bud is a better fighter but i just don't you know i don't know i just think arrow's a lot to deal with you know to me that's a toss-up fight if i had anything i a decision i'd lean toward bud if somebody got knocked out spence would end up knocking him out. okay all right stevie ray you we we already talked you said you you were roll with uh um bud actually no i didn't say that what are you doing, man? Putting words, you putting words in my mouth? I didn't say anything like that. What are you saying? I didn't even make any comment on the situation. I thought the good coach was tr comparing Mikey Garcia to Bud Crawford. I thought that was what he was alluding to. Okay, so Steve. Because Mikey Garcia was the one that was saying some derogatory things as it came to Bud Crawford, saying that he hadn't really fought anybody. He did my so 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 I I I changed it over after that. I said let Oh okay. So, so get him back. But, but, but be, to be honest, I don't think I don't think you're gonna see an Al Heyman fighter fight a fighter from from another organization or another promotion right now for quite some time. I think he's gonna do all this in house stuff, make all this in house money, and then maybe cross the uh, pond a little bit after he's made a lot of money. Right now Errol Spence hasn't made a lot of money yet. And they haven't made a lot of money off him yet. The big payday is coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And if that big payday, if, if Mikey is close, even if he's just close, now I think you just solidify the fight that can maybe be made between Crawford and Mikey. The, the black man, and I do not apologize for saying, the black man against the Hispanic man makes money. The black man, the African-American man against himself does not make money. Mm. Not like the Hispanic money does. That just is what it is. Yeah. And down here in Texas, this is a big state with a lot of money. That's why Jerry Jones is jumping in on the game. So I'm just talking business right now, not so much as matchup against matchup. Right now, if we see Keith Thurman in the same ring, in the same stadium, I don't think it makes half the money as a Mikey Garcia against Errol Spence. Better fighter, though. Right. Who's also a big welterweight. But at the end of the day, if you don't believe me, go look at all those, uh, what, what we, you know, look at all those guys that Floyd Mayweather fought his last six, seven fights. They all were the same guy. They had a Hispanic name from a Hispanic country. You build it up on uh, social media. You build it up on 24-7 or 360 or whatever you want to call it, and you put the guy in the ring, and everybody, every Hispanic out there thinks he has a chance. And they will spend big money to see it 
at the end of the day, it's what we call in professional wrestling, you just got worked. Mm. Hey. Same thing, same thing against the MMA guy. Anybody that actually believes, and I said this on my radio show, and I said this on my podcast, anybody that actually believed a MMA fighter who shouldn't even get a license to fight because you've never fought before, and the commissions all say we're trying to protect fighters, give this guy a license to fight a guy who's never won lost a boxing match, and people actually believe that you had a chance then people wonder why Donald Trump is in office. Are you kidding me? It can be done to anybody. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it, man. Um, Chris, I gotta. I, I, I want to hear. I, I think you might say the same thing, like my man up there. Y'all been y'all been running neck and neck with with coming in real close. Man, I. Uh... I got to go with uh, uh, Bud Crawford, man. I mean, he's he's just so strong, man. I I would not be surprised if he didn't knock Earl Spence out. But I don't, I don't think that fight's going to happen. Uh, I think we would be more likely looking at uh, um, a Mikey Garcia versus uh, Terrence Crawford. Like you said, it's, that's a money fight, you know. Um, that's a big money fight. Pay-per-view, mm -hmm. big stadium. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, you know where they'll go right back to Texas. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm rolling with. Hey, uh, can I say something real quick? You can. I just, I, I just want to give a shout out to Doug Ward. You know, I know he couldn't uh, be on the call, but uh, he's from uh, Title Boxing, and uh, you know, Title Boxing is uh, one of our uh, biggest sponsors, and uh, you know, we love Title Boxing, and uh, y'all go buy some equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, <laughs> hey! You got you got your son, uh, Prime right, man. Because when I when I interviewed him, he's like, "Yeah, I like to uh, give a shout out to all my sponsors." I'm like, "Man, he got it. He ready. He ready." Hey, uh, Dawu. Yes, please, sir. Let, let us know, brother, who who's going to win that fight? Uh, Spence and Bud. Now, I, I might get a little bit of flack for this, but uh, me and my mentor Sloan Harrison was having this debate like a week ago, and I was like. Who did Bud, Bud has skills. He does appear to be the more complete guy, right? But who did he work him on for me to really be like, he about to beat Earl Spence, like that he will be able to deal with that. Um, Gamboa, which was, I felt was too small. Mm -hmm. He gave him issues for like the first four rounds. And that's probably like the best fighter he fought. Him or uh, what's the guy, uh, Diaz? Maybe. Hey, he just fought. No, the, the 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 guy that was that won the Olympic that was uh that was the oh. medalist Olympics. Yeah. I think him, I, I forget his name right now. I don't want to say the wrong name. I, I I'm quite sure it's Diaz. Felix Diaz? Diaz. Maybe. Is that his is that his name? But anyway, um those are the best two guys he fought, man. And sometimes I'll be like, Yeah, you got skills, but like who did you work them Jones on, man? Um, I think top rank, like from a promotional standpoint. They real good at running the fluff game. So I know that Bud is very good, and I do think he the most skilled. But I'm like, yo, I mean, he about to fight Amir Khan, and realistically, that's going to be the best person he fought so far, man. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to reserve my judgment and say 50-50, and I actually agree with Terry Green. I've been saying this for a minute. If somebody gets stopped, it's probably going to be Bud. But if it gets to 12, I got Bud probably winning. I got him winning if he survives. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm at with that fight. And that's just, that's my honest opinion on it. Thank you, brother. I right, I see you, Coach. Uh, before we conclude, Coach Mike, you want to ask more? Yeah, real quick, real quick. I got to make sure that everybody does not forget that this man is moving up from 140 to, from being the undisputed 140-pound champion. He cleaned out that division, so please. Don't think that this man cannot come to 147 and take control of that division. Being 140 pounds does not necessarily mean that he was 140 pounds all the time. This man is a big man as well. So he was sucking down weight to get to 140. So boxing at 147 is much more natural for him as well. So we cannot excuse the fact that he was the last undisputed 140 pound champion coming up to a much comfortable weight class for himself. Let's not put that aside. 
Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. Today's um, talk, which was social media and how it influences people in a positive, negative manner. Uh, I feel like this is uh, something that we need to be talking to or talking about every day, especially when it comes to young people, and not only young people, but to older people like myself who are not millennials. So I'm learning a lot. Uh, thanks to all those coaches that came out and took the time out, you know, and sit down with me on talking on this matter you know uh, all of you guys man i really appreciate it um if there's something that you would like to see in the future just hit me up hit me up on my uh instagram stokes underscore boxing s-t-o-k-e-s underscore boxing b-o-x-i-n-g or you can hit me up on my uh facebook stokes house boxing academy under coach stokes hey let me know because i'm here to talk